The AI model Flux Context in ConfUI is great for targeted editing, whereby you change something specific in the image without affecting the rest. Or you can give references such as textures and styles to apply without changing the scene. For standard text to image generation, I recommend the standard Flux model combined with Lua. However, for editing, the Flux Context model is the way to go. For installing these models and getting running, check out my previous videos. Otherwise, I'll jump straight into these workflows and demonstrations, all which are provided in the links below. Creative replacement, such as adding or changing a specific part of an image, is one of the fundamental flux context workflows to understand. All the workflows here I've separated out and provided, they all follow a similar format. At the top, there are handy notes on the models needed and where to save them. I've covered this in detail in previous videos. And in step one, you need to load these models from the dropdown. To the right, you have the case sampler where you can set your seed and control the quality through the steps. And with image editing, everything as expected revolves around your base input image. So in step two, you add your image. There's an image stitch node here, which allows you to combine multiple image references. But by default, you only need one. So the second image is deactivated, indicated by the purple color. So drag in the image you want to edit. There's a handy new image scale node, which keeps the aspect ratio of your original image, but changes the resolution to best work with the Flux Context AI model. You right click and select Q selected output node. In the preview, you can see the converted aspect ratio. But in this case, 1024 by 1024, the typical resolution to use. Next, step three is the plot. Both the notes on the side here and the official documentation are great guides for this. But as a general rule, you type what you want to change specifically and then use the phrase, while keeping the same camera, object scene, style, and those kind of items that you don't want to change. So here I have changed the entrance of a building to be a glass door while maintaining the same building, context and photo style exactly the same. The prompts work better when you're more specific. If you want many changes, it's better to save the results and run again as an iterative process. But this is amazing because it can all be done through the power of understanding language and context. There's also an upscaler here on the right, which you can activate once you're satisfied with the results. This is controlled from this group, Uter node, which is a custom node installed from the manager called RG3 and it allows you to turn on and off your groups. The step four is the upscaler, and by simply toggling this, you can activate or deactivate the upscaler. Here I'm using a four times four HD model, and this just takes the image that you generated and upscales it by twice. The next level up is using multiple images, used for combining references such as image montages. This is a similar setup, but the second image slot is activated. You can do this by selecting and pressing Ctrl B. Toggle on and off. For this example, I'll use an empty room, which I will populate with some decoration and furniture. So the first image is the empty room, and the second will be the furniture. The image stitch node will combine them. Depending on which direction you select, We'll place them side by side or top and bottom. If I queue selected on the preview image, you will see the effect. This will affect how the images combine together. So you can always experiment with which position it takes. What is important for this workflow is that here at the top, there's an empty latent image node that you can manually set the resolution and aspect ratio. You'll want to do this, otherwise, it will use the default combined aspect ratio of both images together, which is no good. So if the original image resolution is 1184 by 880, I'll set the latent image to be the same. Then for the prompt, type what you want to place from the second image, the first scene. So place the dining table and chairs to the empty dining room image 
keeping the dining room the same and only adding the furniture. You can see now that it has done a great job at keeping the original scene. But you may have noticed that the wooden chairs have turned black, but sometimes you keep tweaking the prompts, try a different stitch direction until you get the desired result you want. Changing the time of day or season in your scene is another great workload. You just need your base image and you can keep the secondary image deactivated. If you want to keep the same image resolution, you can leave the empty latent image node at the top deactivate too. In the text prompt, first write the simple instruction to change, such as change the image to be in winter. Next, you can add as many details as you like, be specific, or you can let the AI to decide. Depends how much control you want. Just put a sentence at the end saying, keep the same composition, architecture, and angle as the original scene, prevent a scene change. With that, the architecture looks pretty much spot on. We have hints of snow on the trees, hedges, and rooftops. Even here on the railings, it's quite impressive. The same technique can be used for controlling the time of day. For this day shot, you can prompt to change the time to be in the evening. Flux Context Dev especially has a tendency of making night shots very dark. So I found that you can prompt in, make the scene not too dark, and add ambient lighting. It will help. As you can see with this generation, the background is not pitch black and is a clear nighttime scene. Although you can use prompts to selectively edit, there are times when you want great control through in painting, especially for small details. You will need some custom nodes, which you can install from the Comf UI manager. These are the Easy Use RG3 and the Comf UI in paint crop and stitch. Another difference in this workload is that there is an in paint condition node or the case sampler and this rather large in-paint crop node. This controls the crop area that you want to mask with options like blending pixel edges, but for the most part, you can leave this as default. In-paint and create the crop mask. Once you drop in your image, right-click, select Open in Mask Editor, adjust the brush, paint over the object you want to remove. Make the mask slightly bigger than the object so that it can be blended in with the generation. Let's say we want to insert something in the middle section of this window. Save the selection, and the prompt has to be very simple and specific, such as add a glowing LED digital media facade between the windows. There is this in-paint stitch node. What it does is it removes only the section that you have masked, and generates a new one, and then pastes it back to the original. To demonstrate this, I will just run the preview image from the in-paint crop, and you can see that only this area is affected. And now if I run the whole workflow, you can see that indeed a media screen has been applied only to that masked area, also exactly between the window lines. But this is great for iteratively making changes. You can see it maintains the same areas you can also take advantage of the powerful understanding of text that Flux has. Add specific words, such as electronics. And now it has added those words exactly in the same space. So very powerful. Style transfer. You can transform your images into styles, such as sketches, watercolors, by using reference images. Here I have a house at night. I would like to change it to be a bright daytime watercolor. Just like the second reference. I'll put in a prompt, change a house, be in a painting style of watercolor, showing only the house and keeping the architecture camera safe. With this generation, it has matched the watercolor style very well. Architectural forms and elements are also perfect in line. This is a very quick way to iterate through different styles, especially if you have reference images that you like. Or if you have a very specific style, I'd recommend using Flux with a lure, which I'll cover later. But this method can give you great results too. Now for the classic sketch to render workflow. This is the inverse of the previous workflow. In the prompt, you can allow the model more creativity 
interpret your sketch in more detailed renders. You only need the one sketch drawing and prompt. It is good to add as many details as you can of the colors and materials. So here I'll use change the image from sketch to realistic render, keeping building surroundings, the edges, the same shape. Realistic urban colors, warm brick, concrete gray, blue glass windows, and then I add some other environmental descriptions. This generation, you can see it has kept all the window positionings, added some very dynamic lighting. Sometimes the quality of the windows are not great, so you may need to creatively upscale. But this is a very quick way to test materials. It also works on all sorts of sketches and geometric forms. You can ask ChatGPT or other LLMs to give more details, adding materials, lighting, and you'll get stronger results. So here I've specified lots more colors and materials. It gives a much better output. You can use LoRa with Flux Context too. If you haven't used LoRa before, they are fine-tuned models which can produce a variety of precise outputs, such as characters, styles, objects, architecture, typologies, and so on. There are more LoRa being produced with Flux Context too. You can find these from a variety of websites. Civit AI used to be one of the main ones, but you're in the UK, unfortunately, has been blocked recently. So you can try other sites such as fluxlower.com and Hugging Face. Just filter for the context. This line lower is quite interesting. You can copy the prompt recommended on the site and download the lower and add it to your directory, your lower folder. The main node you need in a workflow is the power lower, which lets you stack lowers as well. This is activated from the RG3 custom node install. Here you can select and combine lowers by adjusting the strengths. But for the line lower, we can just use one, it add a strength of one. Add the image you want to stylize and paste in that prompt. Bend this image into the line style. And once we run, we have this great line drawing of the building. This could be brought into Illustrator vectorized and used for architect diagrams. There are a few gaps in line work, but these can be cleaned up. This works for all the other laws in the same way. There's an interesting one here, such as the Lego. Just download the law, add it to the power law, drop in a new image, and copy the prompt from the site. And this image into Lego style. There we have a Lego style building. Maybe it's a bit more Minecraft looking than Lego, but there are plenty of more useful lore that you can test on, or even train your own. Text often plays an important part in image generation. You may want to change signs, names, or other text. Changing shop front names is one example. Flux context can keep everything the same, even the text position and style. The prompt template for this is simple. Just type to replace, put in the old text, the new text, while maintaining the same font style and you have to enter the text within quotes. You can see actually it's worked too well, and even included the brackets I put in by mistake. So let's remove these brackets. And now it has followed the text perfectly. Next up is material change. Quite often for architecture imagery, designers will want to test material options with the same form. You only need the one image slot, and in the prompt type change material to Type in your material, and in the second part, enter while maintaining the same camera, mood, lighting, and form. In this generation, you can see the vertical aluminium cladding fits the building very well. It's even taken the original dirt and imperfections from the first image. This is a great workflow to iterate through by just changing one word, such as wood. And now we have vertical wood and cladding. You could adapt this workflow to batch process. It could generate a dozen options in one go. And finally, I will show you a useful way of applying texture references to objects or buildings. You will need two active image slots. I have a white sofa here, which I would like to apply a fabric texture. I will add a tiled pattern in the second slot and add a prompt. Apply pattern over the white sofa. Show only the sofa the same position and shape. Or if this generation has done an amazing job at keeping the same camera angle, sofa, 
and apply the texture very well. It would have taken a very long time to UV map this sofa manually. And also to show you that this can be done with large objects or even buildings. I'll add this huge organic white building, just the prompt, and run. Great. Texture has been applied only to the facades, and not the roof. It was a good choice for the AI. So that was 10 workflows for Flux Context. Try them out for yourselves. I'll see you in next video.